On July 12, 2004, I checked for action on the Pioneer Industrial Railway, and I wasn't disappointed. PREX-1357 and SW-1200RS purchased from Canadian National was switching O'Brien Steel Service Company that morning. It wasn't clear whether PREX-102 was sidelined by mechanical problems or if Pioneer's train crew was simply putting this other unit to use after having it stored online for months. Two days had passed since the city of Peoria believed its operating agreement with Pioneer had expired. The Pioneer wasn't going anywhere until forced to do so by the Surface Transportation Board, which is the federal agency tasked with regulatory oversight of the nation's railroads. That was because the Peoria Bay Short Line believed its agreement with the city lacked an expiration date. The agreement stated that the operator of the Keller Branch could continue for, quote, a minimum period of 20 years unless and until terminated for cause as set forth above or by mutual consent, unquote. By Pioneer's reasoning, because it did not consent to have the agreement terminated, it remained in effect indefinitely. The city of Peoria had a different point of view. On June 29, 2004, it filed an adverse discontinuance application with the Surface Transportation Board. The city of Peoria also focused its attention on a related project. Informed persons understood that the Surface Transportation Board would deny abandonment of the Keller Branch for trail development as long as there were active customers at Pioneer Park. But if rail service could continue on an alternate route, the board might allow such an abandonment to take place. So in July 2001, the city purchased Union Pacific Railroad's Pioneer Industrial Lead, which diverged from that carrier's north-south main line and ran 1.9 miles eastward into the park. This track had been unused save for rail car storage since International Paper Company closed its label manufacturing plant, seen in the distance at right, at the end of 1995. On February 3, 2004, Peoria petitioned the Surface Transportation Board for permission to construct the so-called Western Connection. Scenes recorded 11 days later show where the track ended at North University Street. Before construction could start, easements needed to be acquired from property owners to build a link with the Keller Branch. The project would prove costly. For just 1,800 feet of track and the right-of-way needed to build it, the city spent $2.2 million, mostly grant money. More on that later. For more than a year, the city of Peoria and Pioneer Industrial Railway battled each other before the Surface Transportation Board. On August 10, 2005, the board ruled in favor of the city when it authorized an adverse discontinuance of service by Pioneer. Initially, Pioneer offered to assist the city's new operator with the transition, but a letter sent by the city attorney informed them that the new operator would begin service on Monday, August 22, and that Pioneer must vacate the Keller branch by midnight Sunday, August 21. Pioneer complied, and it looked like the little railroad had run its last. Chosen as operator in November 2000, DOT Rail Service employed an affiliated carrier, Central Illinois Railroad Company, to operate the Keller Branch. Like its predecessor, CIRY sent a locomotive here expecting to assume operations in a matter of days. In fact, on July 1, 2004, the Surface Transportation Board authorized the carrier to begin operations on the Keller Branch July 10, the date the City of Peoria believed its contract with Pioneer expired. The same engine CIRY sent to Peoria in July 2004 returned a year later. It would be parked on the city's former Union Pacific Spur until the Western Connection was completed. 
but this trackmobile led to some drama. On August 27, 2005, a CIRY crew attempted to haul two lumber loads up the line. Nearing Park Avenue, the trackmobile struggled and stalled, and then it was pulled backward downhill by the two cars across Abington, Jefferson, Adams, and Caroline Streets at about 30 miles per hour before slamming into three rail cars left at the interchange. I took these photos two days after the accident. Thick summer vegetation shrouds damage to track and rolling stock. After the accident, CIRY refused to operate on the Keller branch except to switch O'Brien Steel on the south end. Because the western connection remained incomplete, Carver Lumber was left without rail service. This failure constituted a breach of contract, but the city of Peoria didn't care. CIRY offered no opposition to its trail plans. This chain of unfortunate events forced Carver Lumber to employ alternative and costlier transportation services. Reportedly, it had carloads of lumber consigned to Amherst's Union Pacific Serve Peoria Warehouse until the Western Connection was complete and in service. In late 2004, I captured scenes of brush clearing and grading for the Western Connection. Then operator Pioneer Industrial Railway apparently left these storage cars here to prevent installation of the connection switch. The contractor installed the North University Street grade crossing in May 2005 and laid track on both sides of the street the following month. That summer, Pioneer blocked access with the locomotive. This was done to force the contractor to sign a liability waiver so construction of the switch could proceed. The issue had been resolved by the time these scenes were recorded, but Pioneer had but a week left as operator. A common theme among trail supporters was that the poor condition of the Keller branch was a detriment to maintenance of rail service to Pioneer Park. So the city had most of the line from Pioneer Parkway north to Peoria Plastic Company rehabilitated in the winter of 2006. As you can see, its appearance improved markedly after temporary dismantling, reconstruction, ballasting, cross-tie renewal, and surfacing had been done. But good track doesn't always guarantee good service or reasonable transportation costs. Warnings by Pioneer and Peoria bloggers went unheeded. By mid-March 2006, the Western Connection was complete. CIRY's locomotive is shown March 14th, having been moved to the old Gateway Milling Company spur. Two days later, CIRY pulled three lumber loads from the Union Pacific Interchange and delivered them to Carver Lumber. It was the first time the building materials firm received direct delivery by rail in seven months. Unloading was quick. I shot DRSX 1207 with two empties the following day. This map illustrates the concept behind the Western Connection and how it was meant to provide rail service to Pioneer Park. The most serious flaw in the plan is that it cut off Carver Lumber and potential future customers at Pioneer Park from rail competition. Any operator of the Keller branch could connect with eight line haul carriers via the Taswell and Peoria Railroad, which began leasing the Peoria and Pekin Union Railway November 1, 2004. The Western Connection offered a link to just one of these, Union Pacific. With only low volume traffic generated by Carver Lumber, Union Pacific service to the interchange at Pioneer Junction had to be limited. There could be no rate competition and in Carver's case, Union Pacific was an unnecessary addition to the routing, thus higher transportation costs were incurred. Only once did I capture CIRY hauling loads for Carver Lumber. 
The crew moved engine light down the Keller branch and then onto the western connection to fetch two cars at the Union Pacific interchange. The date was July 11, 2006, and much had transpired after four months' operation. Events which would in time restore the Pioneer Industrial Railway as Keller Branch operators started December 22, 2005. On that date, the Surface Transportation Board ruled that CIRY could discontinue service over most of the Keller Branch. The order was effective on January 22nd, at which time the city could remove the line. But the Western Connection remained incomplete. Having maintained neutrality on this issue, Carver Lumber was getting nervous, so on January 10th it petitioned the board to stay its order. Pioneer, which never ceased looking for ways to preserve the Keller branch and return as operator, also petitioned the board for a stay. The board agreed, announcing its decision on January 20th. Then on April 25th, 2006, the board ruled that CIRY had to prove over the next 90 days, through July 24th, that its service was comparable and adequate to that received over the Keller branch by the Pioneer Industrial Railway. Pioneer was given 20 days after that, until August 14th, to respond to CIRY and Carver Lumber. Suffice if to say, Carver Lumber was dissatisfied, and for good reason. Carver spent an extra $55,000 in transportation costs for the seven months it was without rail service. Worse, service over the Western Connection doubled freight rates and quadrupled transit times. Even asked the city of Peoria to reimburse $41,000 in those extra costs. Last half of 2006 ensured more drama. On July 27th, Pioneer Industrial Railway filed an alternative rail service application with the Surface Transportation Board. In October that year, CIRY temporarily closed the Western Connection for reconstruction of the grade crossing at North Allen Road, which was being widened to four lanes. So Carver had its shipments routed via the Taswell and Peoria Railroad and the Keller Branch. A total of three cars were delivered on October 16th and 17th. CIRY refused to deliver them via the Keller branch. Instead, they were transloaded at Taswell and Peoria Railroad facilities in Creve Corps. It should be noted that in late June 2006, DOT Rail Service and Central Illinois Railroad Company were sold to Central Illinois Railroad Holdings, LLC. New management brought new ideas. In an unexpected turn of events, they decided to begin operations on the entire Keller branch, after all. On December 4, 2006, CIRY asked the Surface Transportation Board to withdraw its discontinuance of service exemption, citing new business opportunities. In January 2007, the STB granted the request, but more importantly, it reopened the City of Peoria's adverse discontinuance of service exemption that forced Pioneer Industrial Railway off the Keller branch 17 months earlier. The CIRY inadvertently created controversy in the spring of 2007 when it moved a large number of empty LP gas tank cars from its Elk Grove Village operation, where it had been replaced by another carrier, to Pioneer Industrial Park. The cars were empty, but some city officials feared hazardous materials were being stored on the line. DRSX-1202 and SW-14 arrived the property in June 2007. 
In a development directly related to the addition of the second locomotive, it was learned that Kerry Scharf Materials had purchased an old ready-mix concrete plant located just north of Abington Street and wanted to ship materials stored on site by rail. In September 2007, both DRSX-1202, seen on the line south end at Caroline Street, and DRSX-1207, seen at Pioneer Park, received new paint. That fall, evidence of track work to restore operations the length of the Keller branch were in evidence. Then on November 19th, the STB restored Pioneer's operating rights.